Hey everyone, it's Richard from Pick Nature. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use pop-ups in Elementor. Pop-ups were recently added to Elementor and it's a very flexible way to use pop-ups on your site. Now as always you're going to need Elementor Pro for this so if you want that you can go in the description and get it. How do I make a pop-up? Well basically there are two types of pop-ups I would say. There's one type of pop-up where you open it by pressing something and there's a type of pop-up that just opens without you doing anything. So let's make a pop-up that opens if you press something. So first of all, we're going to need to make a pop-up. Well, we go to these elemental templates here and go to pop-ups. Now here we can create a new pop-up and give that a name. Now, as always, as you start up a new template, you get these presets here, of which you can obviously just use one because they are great templates. But for the sake of understanding these pop-ups, I'm not going to use one of these templates. I'm going to make one of my own. As you can see now, instead of working on a page, we are working on this pop-up window actually. And one difference between normal pages and pop-ups is that you have these pop-up settings right here in the bottom corner. So here you can set the width of your pop-up. You can have it be a viewport unit or a pixel unit. A viewport unit is obviously going to scale with the device width. One VW, which is one viewport width, is basically 1% of your screen. So if I set 30 VWs, then it's going to have 30% of my screen on desktop and 30% of my screen on mobile, which obviously means on desktop it's going to be an average size pop-up. On mobile it's going to be tiny window. So we do not want to use this. Let's just set our width to like 500. And you can also set a custom height, maybe 350. I want this content to align in the center and the rest of these uh, settings are okay. So I'm going to make a single column layout. I'm just going to make a heading. Okay, and now I'm just going to put in a form. Now I don't need this many fields, I just want basically email. And if I want to run my website in a European country, then obviously I need a checkbox as well. So for that we're going to use this acceptance type. Say I agree with the data protection policy and make that required. And obviously you can't have it checked by default because that is not what the GDPR tells us to do. Anyways, this would be like a, a simple setup of our newsletter. I'm just going to make this white. Going back to the settings tab of my pop-up, I can change the color, obviously. And you know, since I always make terrible designs in my tutorials, I'm just going to make something that looks good for once. So yeah, I think that looks cool. So I again, go to my pop-up settings and here we can set paddings for this pop-up. So I want to have an inner padding. Let's adjust the color of this close button a little bit. So this is right here, the close button style. And I could put this position this outside, but that positions it, I don't even know where. I'm going to position this inside, give it a white color, make this size of it fit my font size. So I now want to look at the font size relative to this. I think this is the, uh, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, now we have a simple sign up for a newsletter. How do we want to open it though? If you go to the publish dialog here, you're going to see that there is a conditions dialog. Since we want to open this pop-up on click, uh, we don't actually have to set anything here. Uh, so we're going to come back to this later. So just save and close this pop-up. Let's say I want to open the pop-up if I press this button. Go to the button and now for the link, you can choose this dynamic option right here. And now we go to pop-up and now it's going to say pop-up. If you click it again, you are going to see the settings menu. And we're going to say we want to open a pop-up. It's a little bit barked, so it's up here for some reason. But as you see here, it's my sign up pop-up. And if I update the page now, if you click this now, you're going to see it has opened my pop-up. And apparently, as you can see, there is some CSS happening on our buttons on this page, which makes this look kind of crazy, but it has something to it. I must say. Anyways, the close button works too, as you can see. You can close it by clicking outside. But what if we want this pop-up not to show on a button click or something else, but let's say just automatically reload a certain page. Well, there's nothing easier than this actually. So let's go back to our pop-up and go actually to these options and to the display conditions. So let us just say we want to show our pop-up on a certain page when it loads. Go to your conditions. And now we want to select that page right here. And yeah, let's just pick this page. I don't even know. Now what this says is include our pop-up when a singular page is viewed and it's this page right here. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, it doesn't show our pop-up yet 
And that is because we have only set our condition for where this pop-up is shown, but not a trigger yet. So this pop-up is basically loaded right there, but it doesn't show yet because it doesn't know when it should show or how it should show. So let's go to our triggers again. And here you see our triggers. So basically you can say on page load. So let's say within two seconds, so a two second delay, we want to show this pop-up on that page. So one and two, and there's a pop-up. There's a lot more options that you can use to show your pop-up. So just keep in mind that you want to set your condition for the page and then you set your trigger right here. As you can see, you can set it on scroll to show on scroll. So let's say after they've scrolled down 50% of the page, you can show this pop-up as well. So you're now that doesn't show a pop-up, show a pop-up, show a pop-up. And now that we're 50%, it shows the pop-up right here and uh, you can combine those so you can show it on page load and scroll but you know that doesn't make a lot of sense now this on click trigger is something that you might not think it is it literally means if you click anywhere it's going to show this pop-up so as you can see now the page loads and if i click literally anywhere there's my pop-up and also of course you can do one of these pop-ups that many sites employ which is on page exit intent which means if I move my cursor away from the page, then it's going to show a pop up. So what you could do in that for a pop up like this is just say something like, and let's just say I'm really desperate for each commission I can get. So you could write something like this in there. If you now set your condition to the exit intent, save that. If you have someone who's on your page who's like, oh, you know, these services, you know, they look good, but God, I'm not convinced, you know, fuck this. They go out and then they're like, wait, what's this? 50% off, please don't go. And they're going to be like, damn, I'll co copy this code right here and put, where do I put this code? You know, so you can make um, pop-ups like this, but jokes aside, don't over overuse these triggers. Like if you ask me, you do not need any of those triggers other than the page load and the exit intent pop-up is, is pretty good, but you know, scroll to element you know maybe you can do some crazy designs for this but scroll click inactivity pop-ups you know they don't do it really for me and you know let's show some uh, advanced rules that we can apply to our pop-up as you can see we can set our pop-up to only show after a certain amount of page views so this is of course useful if i run a shop or something i say that if a user seems to be like really considering a purchase then if he's on my page like five times i can offer him a little discount and maybe that will motivate him to actually make a purchase. This show after X sessions pop up is similar. So one session is basically one time your user browses to your site. If your user browses your site and he can have 10 page views, but all of those are only one session. So after one session means that the first session it's not going to be shown, but then it's going to be shown, right? If I set that to two sessions or three sessions, it's three sessions and then on the fourth session the user is going to be shown this pop-up so it's basically the same thing like this page views but there's more of a delay between it i would say this is more aimed at a general shopping offer you can make whereas the page views are like specific to s products so here i can say if my user has come across this page 10 times then obviously he wants it so if i give him an offer Maybe that's going to be like the last straw that's going to motivate him to make a purchase. Show up to X times is pretty self-explanatory. It means if I've shown this pop-up to a user once already, this is a good option because let's say I want to show it just once when the user closes. This is especially good if we have something like age-restricted websites. You can make a pop-up and say show up to X times on close, which means that when the user is older than 18, and he closes the pop-up then I can basically set a cookie and remember that he's already closed this pop-up once so I don't have to ask him again if he's 18. This is what this is basically used for. You could also set it to on open which means that it's actually just going to show this once and doesn't matter if the user closes it or ignores it or whatever it's going to show it only once. So let's just make a pop-up like this as an example. So are you older than 18? Yes or no? So now when when the user presses yes we want the pop-up to close, right? How do we do that? So we go to our dynamic link again and set our pop-up. Now we go to the options of this, say close pop-up. 
Now, as you can see here, you can also set an option, say don't show again, you know, but I don't like using that. It, it's kind of sloppy, you know, because it sets a specific cookie for this, whereas the using the other option sets a cookie that's like more understandable, right? Now, this closes our pop-up and with this page, we just want to send the user to like Google or something. If they're not 18, we don't want nothing to do with them. So, so now, as you can see, it's being shown up to one time and counts that when it's closed. It's still being shown on this side. Uh, on page load right within zero seconds. Let's take a look at what how this looks So as you can see here now we see this are you older than 18 pop-up Don't forget if you set options like this when you check the pop-up You need to open it in a private window or otherwise your cookie is going to be set that you don't see this pop-up again So just make sure you open it in the private window now There's still a problem with this age pop-up right here if I close it right now and you and I reload it You see I don't see this pop-up again However, so if I open this again, we're going to see a problem. There's a close close button. So if there is a kid that is smart, you know, they could just press the close button. And that would basically mean they avoided the quest. And also I could click outside here. That's also going to close the pop-up. We can get rid of this. So if we go to our pop-up settings again, in the settings tab, you see that we can disable the close button. So now this close button is gone. And we want to leave this overlay enabled. It's just an overlay. But we can go to the advanced tab and we can say prevent closing on overlay, prevent closing on SKP, prevent page scrolling. Now we have made this pop-up safe. As you can see now, we have this pop-up. I can't click outside, cannot click close. So if I'm a kid, I need to answer this question or I'm not be not going to be going anywhere. So obviously if I'm not 18, I'm just going to press no. And that brings me to Google. So as a final note i want to show you guys that you can set an image or on this overlay so i can both change the color of the overlay so let's say i want a crazy like purple overlay like this if i'm feeling crazy I do something like this but we can also set an image so yeah i don't know where this image is coming from it's just like the demo image or whatever but you could put an image here and you can actually also put a transparent image here and the elementor dudes they made a real nice preset for this and it's the preset with these, what do you call those? Blood oranges. So if you take a look at that, and as you can see, they actually have this image right here, which is just an, a transparent image with these blood oranges and the shadows as well. So this makes a real nice effect. So this is a nice piece of inspiration right here. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned how to make pop-ups. It's definitely a very powerful tool. And uh, I'll see you next time.